Thank you. Thank you, Professor, for uh, uh, inviting me here. And uh, thanks. It's a great honor to come and speak at the Foundation Day. Um, and when uh, Shaurav, uh, uh, a longtime friend uh, who is to be in, my, in the same hostel, just told me, what, what is the topic that you would like to speak? And uh, I was not sure and just blurted out social inclusion and education and our education. So now today I realized what the topic was. Because see, I, ca I, I don't take it to heart. Because I don't think so, uh, what is it? I don't like engineers and management students equally. <laughs> and I hope you guys all prove me wrong. Because see, uh, yesterday I, I was an MP and uh, went to this remote part of MP where there was this lady who, who for the last 22 years has been cultivating a forest. And in, in five to six acres of land, she has grown bamboo to a huge extent. I mean, it's completely filled with bamboo and she wants to replicate it. I asked her, what's her annual income? It was approximately 30,000 rupees a year. And she says, Usse kuch nahi hone wala. Isle I send my uh, daughters and daughter and son to Mumbai. For 22 years, she has created a forest. At 30,000 rupees, her footprint in this world is absolutely zero negative. I mean, she has created forest. And what has she sent her daughter and son to be a maid servant in somebody's house? Look at the instability of the 600 million Indians in our country. Right, the more contribution to this country in many ways, you tell me, I'm just challenging, I'm not telling, I'm, I'm challenging us because even after 67 years or 68 or 69 years of independence, if 300 million people do not have electricity and 450 million people do not have clean water to drink, 500 million people live less than $2 a day, we are 131 in the human development index of our, in the world, 131. So what's the point of being the second largest growing economy that we cannot solve the issues, basic issues? The, because we name it as basic issues, we think it's simple. We consider it as a social problem, and it's actually not a simple problem. So is our education system, can it actually solve complex problems of this country? We might be brilliant in Excel sheets, Brilliant in word. Kisko paisa milta hai country mein? Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Right? Non-English speakers in our country have no chance. How many of us would invest in a resume that is a Kannada or a Oriya or a Bengali? Right? How inclusive is our education system that way at all? Where we believe that a poor is a partner, not a beneficiary. Where a poor can be an innovator, a poor can be an inventor. Why can't a poor person be also head of a corporate in the future? Where is that level playing field in any of our systems in many ways? It's absent. It is because you and we have to create it. We are secluded in our own institutes, in our own corporates, in our own houses with more and more gated communities. How many of us actually would like to have our kids actually see what the actual issue is? Don't stop complaining, but start solving the issue when you're on the streets, right? If this country, if this state, sorry, we had this whole issue of Kaveri problem, right? You know the average efficiency of water, if 100 liters of pure drinking water comes into this city of Bangalore, 30 liters gets wasted in inefficiencies of leakages, forget the other parts. Why haven't we been able to solve it? Because we think it's not, it's below our dignity and degree. We have created degree as another class system in our country. Like PhD. You and me did a PhD on sugarcane, we'll all be called an expert of sugarcane. If a farmer doing sugarcane for 40 years, will never be called an expert because he does not have a PhD after his degree. Right? How do we look at that experience? How do we respect that experience in a manner that becomes an asset to this country, that poor are financially poor, but not poor in their brains? We have 600 people who are brilliantly smart, but why are we so exclusively thinking that 
they cannot actually provide the intellectual depth that this country can actually need, right? You know, the contribution that the ITIs have done to this country is immense. If you look at the 1970s during the uh, agricultural revolution, when the farmers needed somebody to actually supply good water pumps and actually rectify those water pumps, re give fertilizer at the right time, repair what is happening in the house, or a motor welding machine, it was the graduates of the ITIs who actually created the base of this country in many ways. How many of us actually go to the government and say, these are the solutions? It's very easy to say, complain, government karna chahiye. But who is the government? Have we also created enough solutions for the government to replicate in many ways? We have a lane system on the roads. How many of us follow the lane system? Do we blame the government? Why do we wear helmets on when we drive on a motorcycle? Not because we will get killed, it's because the police will catch us. Right? We have to relook at what this country has to offer. Because if you look at today, look at Syria, look at Iraq, look at Palestine, look at border between India and Pakistan, look at parts of Afghanistan. The, all the issues is social exclusivity in many ways that we have not created opportunities for the poor. In, if in Orissa and Jharkhand that 6% of the land is not under the government of India's rules, is because we have not created opportunities for the poor in this country to actually come up to the same level that you and me have. We have created the divide. What I'm challenging to a lot of these youngsters, you youngsters, the country is in your hands right now. We have five to seven years to prove ourselves. Africa is five steps behind, Latin America is six steps behind. This is a country which is a paradox between an overdeveloped and an underdeveloped country. This is a country that can actually create financial, technological, market linkage innovations. That can be replicated in the rest of the world. It's not the one billion people in, or, or 600 million people in Europe and America that are going to solve the problems, because the one billion people in Africa and, and rest part of Indonesia, Philippines and Southeast Asia, are people who are going to follow how did the country like India was able to solve the issues of poverty and sustainability in a manner that is that we can actually replicate. Travel to Madhya Pradesh, travel to Maharashtra, that during the summer we have statistics of every 30 seconds, every 30 minutes of farmer commit suicide because the drought has been there for the last four years. We all tout Gurgaon as one of the shining cities of our country, right? When Gurga started in 1992, water table was at five feet. <clears throat> Today the water table is at 1,250 feet. The rich guys will put enormous expensive water pumps, but you're going to draw the water pumps from the same aquifer that the near, nearby villages actually draw. So for the nearby villages, the farming communities, the water table has gone down by 1,500 feet because you put expensive pumps in Gurga. The farmers who have no other choice but to send their kids as construction workers in Gurgaon. So what have we done? We have increased poverty because of our own lifestyle sitting in Gurgaon. Now they come here, live in slums, and the slum becomes an eyesore to all of us. But we have created that cycle in many manner. How are we sustainable? Yesterday I was traveling with the so-called World Bank experts, or One World Bank experts, saying that, oh, see how they used to live in thatched roofs, and uh, the sign of wealth is that the poor actually make cement houses if they get a little bit of money to show off their wealth, or they are in the wealthy position. But the design of houses are so poor that the thatched roof was much cooler, and now, see, um, it's because they are not educated. I said, sir, then what's the difference in Gurgaon? In a place like Delhi, we built buildings with complete glass facade and said, I have environmental friendly air conditioners. Where is education in design? We also wanted to show that we are as good as the West, so we aped the buildings, right? We could not have looked at the climatic conditions of Bangalore and Delhi and created buildings that were actually according to the tropics. We could have shown to how Jakarta can be built in the future, how Manila can be done, how Lagos can be built. We lost an opportunity. Newton did not have a PhD at that point of time, right? 
So the question is, we need to relook at what our priorities are and how can we inclusive in every process and thought and business models that we create problem of a thresher. Uh, in, the, in the rural areas, we said, how do we make a thresher more efficient? Because a lot of the farmers waste enormous time using the threshers. So we had, uh, after that, there were two guys from Cambridge who came. Okay. Same problem given to them. Only difference was they made the local welder as their project partner. Completely changed the thought process. They actually sat with the welder and it became a three member team. How do you bring in that inclusivity in our thought process? And that's what we think we need to relook at what inclusivity actually means for our society. How do we look at day to day challenges that this country and around the world are facing? We cannot, it cannot afford to have even 10% of you who are graduating again go into the bubble that my colleagues have gone into, my contemporaries have gone into, that's not sustainable. I mean, a pure statistics that if every one of us, okay, try, strive to live like a person in Gurgaon, or in, in Mumbai, the richer parts of Mumbai, or New York, Washington, or in London, we need nine Earths. That means we can do those luxuries Provided 600 million people remain poor. Is that ethical? Is that morally right? Is that the way sustainability, even if you look at an average European, if we had, to, not about an American, if we had to live like an average European, <coughs> we need five Earths. Rather than complaining that the US and the Europeans need to cut down, they will have to do it. They have no other choice. They will have to do it. Why don't we showcase our country to be that leader in sustainability? Forget what the other countries do. That forget what they have done to the environment today in the climate change issues. Forget that. Why do we stop complaining and say, we will show to the world how sustainability can be done in the real sense. How do we start looking at, we really are not aware that what this country can actually offer us in many ways. Look at it as an opportunity. Travel in this country and find what the issues are. Don't say that these are problems, but look at opportunities to solve them. Are we actually in many ways afraid to solve them? That we don't actually want to confront them that it is not my issue in many ways? Simple thing, this lady who has done the forest uh, work, if I were in position, I would have left that place. Boss, this is not my kid. 30,000 rupees on a yearly basis. So I asked her, what is your health issues and health costs? She says, my health costs in the family is approximately 3,000 rupees a year. 150 rupees for bus charge to go every six weeks. How many of us spend 10 to 14% of our income on health? That's the fate of 450 million Indians. Forget the Africans and the Southeast. That's much more than. So we've not been able to think about effective healthcare. The moment people talk about healthcare, it's not about, oh, how do I create a solution for people to become healthy once they are sick? Rather than how do we prevent people from getting sick in the first place? Why don't we holistically all want to create a market? Nothing wrong in having subsidized education, but how do you turn on, I don't want your money in 30 years, guys. I don't want to say I've made a lot of money, I'm going to donate it, I don't want your money. Money is plenty in this country. What I want is what have you learned that actually be, been effective in the poorer parts of the world where you make it inclusive. Tell me one intervention that you can do in your lifetime that is more than enough for this world in many ways. There are one billion people in this, in our country. Divide by, say, five. <coughs> That's around 200 million families, okay? If there are 30 million families who can make sure that six families get out of poverty, get me one person out of poverty. None of your money can help me get, get it's a, what we all by donating this CSR, 
and I'm going to donate money, I'm going charity is of no use. It's a band-aid to a problem. What we need to effectively remove is the disease. And for that, we actually need to know what this country's problems are. And that is where I mean, are we inclusive in our thought process? Ki, this is also my problem to solve. This is also something that I should be contributing to solve it in a manner that is sustainable financially, environmentally, socially, all three. Are we doing this sustainability, right? I am not a finance person. I'm so-called MD, I used to be the MD for solar for, uh, I hated balance sheets. Okay, so my colleagues, otherwise, if I ran the organization financially, it would have collapsed many years ago. Fortunately, I have my colleagues who, who run the organization that we survived. And because I speak English, I got the awards. Plain and simple. The contribution, that's what it is. Because I can speak in English, I got all the awards. And my colleagues who have struggled for years will not be recognized. And that's the non-inclusive nature of everything else in many ways, right? So we have basic issues that come up. And, and every day is a challenging. Once you actually go and find out, it becomes very addictive. Don't think like it's social issues and these are people from the companies. This is not a private sector attitude. Private sector will always say, we'll all invest in Uber, Flipkart, Ola. I don't know how the valuation is done on exit strategies. They never make money. Then they'll have mergers and acquisitions, spend a whole lot of money. How many of you ever heard of a street vendor making a loss? In the last 20 years or 30 years, there are two pro street vendors in this country. If they lower, how many of you actually have heard, oh, kal se nahi aane wali hai. from tomorrow she is not going to one? No MBA, right? No engineering skills. She makes enough money for her three kids to survive after paying all the rental, the hafta, the and she takes money, how many of us will take money at 10% a day? 10% a day, how many of us will take money and make a business? Look at your Excel sheets. She has survived, right? How many of us actually have learned about doing a business plan on a street vendor? I think we need to relook, rethink. You are in such a position, apt position of your time, just graduating right now such an opportunity to solve the problems that is so exciting in many ways. Because day in, day out, it's like problems that exist are that don't let you sleep, just like an IoT problem that you couldn't, sleep, you couldn't solve and you go to wake up at 3 o'clock and solve it. These issues are 10 times more exciting. More exciting that, was, first of all, the question is not formulated in Google. So there are no answers. So I say the best advantage that I had over all of you when I started was, I didn't have the internet, so I had to go to the field. So today, you have a, such an opportunities of issues where you actually can make this country as a superpower of solutions. Forget this military rhetoric that we all have. Let us make this country a superpower of solutions where no other country thinks of destabilizing this country because most of the solutions come from this country. Go to any part of this country in the northeast, to the Kanyakumari, to Ka uh, Kashmir, you have enough problems that you can actually take double of light time to solve and sustain yourself. I'm not poor. None of my colleagues are poor there. You have spent 20 years of your life, you're not poor. I think I don't want you youngsters, even 10% of you actually went out and did something that, was, that you took knowledge from this prestigious institute this country will change. The previous generations have not done it in the manner they should have, equal into my generation, but you guys have to do it because we don't have choice in terms of social exclusive net and what is ha happening in climate change. So let's not be one exam wonders, guys. Let's prove it to why you have come here. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity.